everybody. Happy Tuesday. I hope that you are all getting settled in with a delicious lunch today. I have a, uh, a cup of uh, grape juice. Actually, I drank a cup of coffee this morning to prepare for the guests we're interviewing today, Chuck Little, who is more high energy than I am. Um, and in the meantime, I thought the tool that I would show you today uh, on my tool bench, well, uh, you know what, let's, let's go with this one. This, this is my grandfather's tool bench, my grandfather's folding tape measure. It's something that you don't see often. Um, it's definitely um, a good toy to have. Oh, I'm gonna invite Scott. Scott? So yeah, showing off some of these old tools. It's amazing on, you know, they do last forever. Hey, Scott, how's it going? Oh. Can you hear me? Oh, I, uh, think, I can hi. hear you. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Good. How are you today? I'm really good. Happy lunchtime. Thank you. I'm actually out and about on the road today, so I'm, I'm with you from my car. Hey, that's why technology is absolutely amazing, because we can do lunch and chat about stuff anywhere. So <laughs> That's right. Oh, it's very exciting. Well, I was just showing off Grandpa's folding tape measure. Definitely an old tool that um, is are still used a lot. A lot of trades are still using tools like this, but more folks are com like used to a, a roll-up tape measure. So, Ooh. so Kayleen, what's the advantage of a of a tape like that versus just a standard roll-out tape measure? Why would you use something like that instead? Um, I do stuff like if I'm doing something that needs a consistent measurement, I it's called a storyboard. And sometimes you can just use a plain piece of wood and create one. But something stiff like this is just nice and consistent because you can go along. If you have a roll of tape measure, you do have to lock it in place. Sometimes they're bendier. Um, now, as far as how the other trades use them, Scott, I don't know. That's a good like I can't <laughs> wait to interview because I see Masons use these a lot. Yeah. Um, and so I'm not sure if it's the rigidity of it that makes it handier to use. But now I'm going to have to interview a mason. We'll have to find out. Absolutely. We'll track one down for you. I think, I think I've heard those called like mason's rulers or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. So anyway, we'll have to research it and find out. Fun stuff, right? This is uh, the best right. part. Well, thanks for joining me today, Scott. I'm really excited to chat about today's topic. Um, which, you know, we're talking about trade schools and apprentices and really, why? And so, we are. yes. So talk to me about kind of how is SEFCA viewing right now these opportunities? Do you want to chat about, ooh, SEFCA is the best. Yeah. Well, well, let me tell you what I'm doing today really quickly. I am out and about visiting high school construction teachers. So we are visiting today, we're visiting three high school construction teachers here in Metro Atlanta. And then tomorrow we're going to visit two more outside of Metro Atlanta. So we're out just visiting with them. We're doing a little bit of video with them to kind of, you know, get them on tape talking about what they do. And so, so, and that's a big part of what SEFCA does is we work closely with high school construction programs here in Georgia. We work with middle school programs. Programs, we work with elementary programs. The idea is to get young people excited about a career in the skilled trades. And so that's part of what I'm working on today by visiting with these teachers and capturing them on video because they're so passionate about what they do. And they're really our best salesmen, salespeople, if you will, in terms of getting the word out about the skilled trades. So we're really excited. I'm excited to be out on the road today. Um, but then the other thing about SEFCA is we do a program called Construction Ready that some people are familiar with. That is geared more to adults who want to get a quick path into the construction industry. It, you know, within four weeks, you can be working in commercial construction if you go through the Construction Ready program. And so, so that's a big part of what we do also. But we're just, we're having fun. It's a good summer. Construction is active here in Georgia. That we We're still building a lot. We're building a ton. And all the companies we talk to say they're still having trouble finding skilled workers. And so, you know, there's still jobs available. And so we're just working to get the word out that, hey, there are jobs, there are training opportunities. And that's why we're doing this series with you, Kayleen, is to help help get the word out that the opportunities are still there. The training is still there. The need is still there. So let's let's get about, you know, getting people to work in our industry. 
Yes, big time. It's such an opportunity. We are essential workers. And look, there are many opportunities hiring right now. I know if you want to do delivery type services, that is a way to employment. Um, but the reality is, is that construction is offering pathways to careers, long term careers that pay great. This is a sustaining life changing opportunity. And I can't believe that. I, of course we are. Of course, we're having problems with you know, not getting people into the trades, but still, it's hard to wrap my brain around as to why. And so it is, it's a good question. I mean, I, but, but you raise up a great point. I always like to help people understand the difference between a job and a career. A career is a place where you can go as high as you want to go. You can climb that ladder as high as you want to go. In fact, I saw, I saw that we have someone on our our call today uh, from our uh, Construction Ready graduate, and I'm sure that can attest. I mean, a lot of times our Construction Ready graduates start out in entry-level positions, but they climb that career ladder as high as they want to go. And we've heard of Construction Ready graduates traveling all over the country, getting promotions into leadership roles and foreman roles and safety professional roles. And so that's the sort of thing that you see a lot in construction is you see people you know, climbing that career ladder. And, and of course, that means more money, right? More, more sure. opportunity, more money. And it's, it's just an awesome industry. And so we're, we're all about it. You know, what's interesting is uh, the student that you spoke of um, did put a comment on that a lot of people getting into they're this, scared. they're afraid. Yes, they're scared. And you know what? I completely have to agree with that because they're afraid of the unknown. Is really what it is. And what more folks I think need to realize that everybody is nervous on their first day of work. And often in the construction industry, you're going to a new job site. So you just gotta get over that and realize, you know, everybody feels that way and get over being scared. I don't know, that's, what are your thoughts, Scott? How do we get people over being afraid? I well, The kind of opportunities that's there, they're unaware and they don't know how, you know, where to go. They don't know where to turn. They don't know who to talk to. You know, you go to a construction site and there's this huge fence around the site. And if you're able to get into the site, there's, you know, some burly, you know, big guy standing there saying, come back tomorrow or come back next week. And so yeah. I think that contributes to the fear is as an industry, we need to open up a little bit more and be, you know, open to people coming into our industry. And that's why we love the Construction Ready program is it's, it's a clear door you know, into our industry. And same thing with our K-12 work also. Yeah. Well, a lot of folks need to understand too that uh, contractors are smiling constantly. Sometimes we just can't grin though because it's so dirty out, you're going to get stuff all over your teeth. So <laughs> that's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, this is awesome. And it is the education and demystifying the magic trick. And that's why I'm so excited about our guest today, too, um, because Chuck Little is in it. He is part of HR at a trade school. So it's this beautiful blend of knowledge that he'll be able to share with us today, you know, and sort of help with stuff. But to our viewers... You know, I want folks to ask questions this week. I really hope that we have some engaged viewers and some questions because um, this is a topic that, I don't know, Scott, I feel fortunate that you and I kind of know and get, but I have to remind myself and rewind on what it was like before I knew, oh, how awesome job sites were, or how to get into them or what to happen next, so... Yeah, no doubt. Well, you have a great guest today. Chuck Little is one of the best in the business. He knows this industry inside and out, he, especially the electrical industry. That's his specialty. So if you are interested in a career in electrical contracting, we have just the guy on this message today with on the Instagram Live. Chuck Little is amazing. He can speak to electrical careers all over the country, and he's, and he's very passionate about what he does. And they have a great training center right here in Atlanta that he's going to, I think he's going to give you a little tour of later on this, later on today. So I'm excited, um, you know, to see this and I'm excited for you to talk with Chuck. I know you've talked to him before, but I'm excited for everybody to hear directly from Chuck Little and all that, that they have to offer there. So it is. And um, so before though, I get to Chuck, where can folks go to find out more information? Because the opportunities that SEFCA offers is obviously not just the K-12 mm -hmm. pipeline, but this right. other program that adults can get into. So let's pretend, Scott, I moved to Atlanta or Georgia. Woohoo, it's hot. Oh, humidity. Peaches are great. Yay. Uh, how do I get a job? How do I become involved? It is super easy. You just go to constructionready.us. We have a website that is dedicated. It's a SEFCA program, but we decided to brand it as constructionready.us. 
you go there, whether you are someone who wants to work in the industry, if you're an employer that wants to hire our graduates, you can go there. If you're a graduate and you want to get more training, because we offer higher level training, you go to constructionready.us. You fill out the form there, and this lovely person on our team named Vita White will contact you and get you into the program. And within four weeks, we don't guarantee a job, but we have a 95% placement rate through that program. And so, wow. you know, if you stick with us, there's a really good chance you're going to get an opportunity, but that's where you go, constructionready.us. You can read all about the program. You can sign up for more information, and it's a free program, too. Absolutely no cost for, for uh, people to go through the program. So, so yeah, no, no lose situation. That is a win-win. <laughs> and, hey, um. Yep. I, are you able to, or do you know what the average starting pay rate is for one of these folks? Yeah, so we're seeing about 13 to 15 an hour for entry-level positions. So there, it's a good starting pay. A lot of our people that come to us, they're making maybe $9 an hour. So within four weeks, you can take a jump from, you know, 9 to 13 to $15 an hour. And then the companies, I see that Dreadwatt with us is an electrical apprentice. That means he's in an apprenticeship program, and he's learning the trade of, of, of electrical. And he is going to, um, he's, he's going to, you know, I'm not going to say what he's going to make, but he's going to be making a lot more than 13 to 15 an hour. Electrical journeyman electricians make, you know, 60 to $75,000 a year. So that's 30 to, you know, $40 an hour is what, you know, is what Dread Watt's going to be looking at within four years. It's about a four year program, but again, it's all paid for. I guarantee you that Dread Watt is not paying a dime for that apprenticeship training. It's funded by the IEC, the independent electrical contractors. And, you know, he's going to go from 13 to 15, whatever he's making now up to, you know, 30 to $40 an hour within four years. It's really, it's an amazing deal. And that's why we're so excited to get the word out. And hang on, because I know the answer to this, but would you please inform our viewers are folks often making money during those four years? <laughs> so it is earn while you learn, right? And so you are earning money. Normally, the way it works is you're earning money during the day. You're working during the day. And then you're going to school at night. Maybe you're going on a Friday. Maybe you're going on a Saturday. But absolutely, you're earning at least 40 hours a week, you know, a nice paycheck. You're getting this training. And within four years, you're earning more money. And it's really... You know, it's just amazing to me that, you know, the, 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 you know, what they have to offer. And so there's IEC, which is the independent electrical contractors. You're actually talking with Chuck Little today, who is with the AECA. They're actually competing organizations, but they work together because they both need new workers. So they they work together through SEFCA to get the word out. And so, um, you know, the AECA is actually, uh, they're union affiliated. The IEC is what we call open shop or, or merit shop affiliated. So, you know, there are all sorts of options. You can do union, you can do non-union, you can do electrical, plumbing, carpentry, masonry, whatever. We have a ton of awesome opportunities in this industry. That is awesome. So would you mind repeating again the website that folks can go to? Because I do see that they are asking. And then Scott, would you mind when you sign off also typing it in? Absolutely. So it is constructionready.us, constructionready.us. Go there. There's a lot of good information out there. And that is your door into this industry. And it's a, as I said, it's a free door. You, you're going to come in. You're going to go as high as you want to go. You're going to make as much as you want to make. It's an awesome, awesome opportunity. So, you know, help us get the word out. Everybody on the call, help us get the word out. I will also put it in a comment before I jump off. And by the way, I do. I will not be on the rest of the call today. I have to get in with this instructor now. But you're in great hands with Chuck. And I know there are some other folks on the on the call today who can help out as well. And I will definitely be back next week. I'm looking forward to, I believe we have Jeremy Whitaker joining us next week. Oh, so, and I don't want to get too, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves here, but he is with uh, CW Matthews and highway construction. That's a whole other world of opportunity. There is a ton of highway construction. I don't know about in Colorado, but they're building highways everywhere here in Georgia, highways and bridges and everything. And so you're going to be talking with Jeremy. We're going to be talking with Jeremy Whitaker uh, with C.W. Matthews next week. So we're excited about that and looking forward to it. And I hope you have fun with Chuck today. He is he is a wonderful resource and he's going to uh, share a lot of good information with you today, Kayleen. And thank you for, for doing this with us. It's always good to see you Heck and yeah. uh, look forward to chatting again next week. It sounds awesome, Scott. Have a great rest of your day. Yeah, see you for lunch next week. Uh, thank you, Kayleen. All right, bye. bye.
Um, that is awesome. Um, Steve, thank you so much for sharing your stories. And yes, folks, check it out. And I do know that we had uh, that uh, boy, oh, let's see, ask me about HVAC. Here's what I know about HVAC. They're always the coolest or hottest people in the room. <laughs> uh, trade jokes forever. Um, but you can go to the website and um, check out more information. Now I'm going to bring on Chuck Little. I'm so excited to um, have him join us and answer a bunch of questions. Awesome. Oh, thanks folks for sharing the story. Um, and here's the thing. I am learning that the comments don't always stay up on Instagram lives yet. Um, hey, Chuck, how's it going? Hey, can you rotate well, your camera or I'll... Yeah, guess what, Kayleen? It's raining out here in hot Atlanta, so I'm, I'm out in our parking lot, but I just wanted to make sure that people could see the building that we have for our apprenticeship program. I love it. Built. Can you flip the camera around? Yes, I can do that. For folks who don't know, I actually met Chuck um, uh, about a year or so ago, and I came to the school and got to interview one of the students and talk to them about their experience at the school and go through it. But this building is beautiful. The facility is fantastic. Chuck, how many square feet is the building? I knew you would ask, and the answer is 36,000 square feet. 36,000 square feet as I work my way in out of the uh, little bit of rain. And Kayleen, have I ever told you what my nickname is? <laughs> no. My nickname is Little Chuck. So you can call me Little Chuck. <laughs> so now, now I can't say I'm a rapper, but, but that is my nickname since my name is Chuck Little, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did have a cup of coffee this morning to keep up with you because I am an energetic person, but you are definitely off the charts. And actually, Scott, we have a Carl Bowles saying hello. Uh, he's the graduate of Class 5 Westside Works. So um, students popping on to say hello and also cheer on the facility. So for those folks, now we're going to take a tour, actually, of this facility, right? Yes, we are. And I'll switch back and forth. Right, right now, I walked into our conduit vending uh, facility. But I want to be clear about trade schools versus apprenticeship programs. Well, yeah, let me, actually, let me actually ask you, because there are a lot of terms when it comes to construction education. Um, there are apprenticeships, trade schools, two-year degrees, certifications. You know, those are just a few of the terms. Can you explain some of these differences just because there is a lot of confusion sometimes? Yes. And so let me tell you, when I, I've, ta I've talked to probably you know, 20, 30,000 people, students in, tw in, tw in 20 years. And the first thing I say to them, yes, there's tens of thousands of careers that you can pick and choose from in America. But I say to them, how many pathways are there to get to those careers? And my answers that I get from students are anywhere from one to infinite pathways to get to all those careers. And here's the reality. There is only five pathways to get to a career in America. The first way everybody always talks about is four-year college. Everybody I says traditional four-year college, right? And I'm going to go through all, all, all five of these pathways, and I'm not saying one is better than the other. You've got to decide for yourself. But four-year college, you're going to spend about 30000 bucks a year. That's the average cost of tuition, room, board, books, fees. What they don't know is it takes the average, the majority of kids, six years to get a four-year degree. <laughs> six years times 30 is 180000 bucks you're going to spend to get a degree. And then once you oh. graduate, once you graduate, the, the myth says, well, I'm going to make a lot of money. And so now I'm going to show you what this, this shows you right here. I'm going to try. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, can you see it that way? Go, yep. Yes. Go standard. All right. I'm going to see if I can get a little bit better. All right. So that talks about the, about the degrees. Now, if you get a degree in engineering, man, you're on the left side of the page making on the low side about 60000 on the high side about 80000 average starting pay. But then there's this other side of the page, and the majority of kids come down on the bottom right-hand side making thirty, thirty-five thousand 35000 bucks a year. Now, I'm not saying this is all about the money. You've got to choose what you want to do and what you want to become. But just to automatically say, I'm going to college, I'm going to get out and make a lot of money, that's not necessarily the truth. All right? So that's one way to go. The second option is two-year technical college. We work very well with two-year technical colleges here in Atlanta and Georgia. And so we have what's called articulation agreements. If you want to go to two-year college to get that associate degree in electrical systems, you can do that. And then through our agreement, you can enter our apprenticeship program as a third-year apprentice, not as a first-year apprentice. So again, we have articulation agreements, and that can work. And there's plenty of other things that kids can pick and choose from when they go to college, uh, all kinds of careers. And you pay a whole lot less money, maybe three or 4000 bucks a year, times three years to get a two-year degree, not six years to get a four-year degree. And when you graduate, there, there could be some good fields that you could pick and choose from. Mm -hmm. The third way to get into a career is the military, right? The military. Right. If you want to join the military, you can join the military. The military will pay for additional education. 
They'll put you through college if you want to go through college. You can get we Our guys love to hire ex-military folks because they got the discipline. Yeah. They've, been, they've been trained that way, right? Absolutely. So military could be a good option. Now, the fourth way, I really don't strongly suggest that folks do that. I say it's straight to the world of work. If you want to go straight to the world of work yeah. without getting specialized training or education. That's just super added, hard knocks. <laughs> yes. yes. And, 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 and on That's average, on average, yes, on average, you're not going to be making a whole lot of money if you don't get some kind of skilled training. Yeah. So when they say, oh, there's infinite ways to get to all these thousands, tens of thousands of careers, I say, now I've given you four, now give me the fifth way. And you can hear crickets. You can hear crickets. Nobody knows hardly, hardly that there's apprenticeship programs. Yes. Yes. Magical number so five. We're, that's where we're at right now at our apprenticeship program. Now, let me say, the trade school, there's trade schools that I work with uh, and know about, not, work, not so much work with here in Atlanta and across America. And, and you need to know that some of them are profit-making and then some are not for profit-making. But profit-making schools can charge you a lot of money, just like college can charge you a lot of money. Yeah. They're good schools. You learn a craft or a skill or a trade in a short amount of time, but you're still probably going to have some debt. So that's a pure school. Now, when we talk about apprenticeship programs, like Scott was saying, it's a combination of work and school. Yeah, like, so um, in, hang on, real, do you mind, can you define what is an apprentice? An apprentice is a person who comes into our program and is going to learn how to, be, in our world, how to become, and there's hundreds of apprenticeship programs yeah. across Georgia and thousands across America to, for the various skills. Like Scott said, for brick masonry, for carpentry, for plumbing and pipe fitting, for sheet metal, for HVAC, there's, a, there's hundreds and thousands across, there's thousands across America and hundreds in Georgia. So an apprentice is a student that comes to learn a specific trade and is using hands-on learning and also classroom time. Yes. Yeah. Exactly right. It's a combination of both of those things. And what the best part is, is we pay you to go to work. Now, and I got to be clear, a lot of employers out there say I have an apprenticeship program. And you could say that and, and, and create your own apprenticeship program. But that is not what I call an official apprenticeship program. An official pro apprenticeship program is called a registered apprenticeship program. And what does that mean? It means that you are registered with the US Department of Labor and they jump through certain hoops that make sure that employers are involved. But in our case, we have 50, 50 employers involved in our association that hire people and then you have structured training in the work so that you're not just oh go there and just sweep the floors and that's all you're going to do and then you have the school part in our case school is one day every two weeks so out of every 10 working days out of every 10 working days you're going to get paid to go to work and then one day you're going to go to school and in our case like scott was saying it is completely tuition free, completely hey, tuition free. Can I actually ask for a redefinition? Because I see school like you have one day of like classroom time, but you're at school all the time. School in this industry is on the job too. Like you're learning muscle memory, how to do equations. So you, all, you only have to be in a classroom one day a re week, right? Yes. And kids say, wow, I can do that. Yeah, sure, that's I, great. I can well, do that. Well, that is. The, the good news is it's one day every two weeks. The bad news is, yeah, when you come in, you're going to have a test slapped down on your desk. And if you get a bad score on that test, you have to wait two more weeks to try and make it up. There's no additional papers, no, you know, no this, that, or little extra extra points. And so right. if you start out on a, on a bad note, you, you might be behind the game, you know, whatsoever. So right now I've walked from the conduit room uh, to our, to this is our bookstore. We have a bookstore just like universities and colleges do. And here you can yeah. see, uh, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, mathematics Ooh. in our program. Algebra one, algebra two, algebra three, geometry, trigonometry. Okay, Lee, I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to give you a, I'm going to go from rap to country. There's a country song out there that said, mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. No, <laughs> it's now. It, you, know, you, could install, you could install construction workers. We are fighting American stereotypes all the time here in Georgia. Well, and once we get, once we, go ahead. I think part of it is though, when you just made that list of math things like algebra, trigonometry, that scares people. They don't realize like, Chuck, I mean, I didn't understand the Pythagorean theorem until the first time I went onto a job site and squared up a wall. And I'm like, oh, that's it. I wasn't great at necessarily translating it until I had the application. And that's what construction provides. It's the hands-on application mm -hmm. of math. And I, it turns out I love math now. I bake, so I eat it, I build it, I sing it. It's all math, right? So I You have hit, you've yeah. hit it on the head. 
the triangle. I say that. What is A squared plus B squared equals C squared? You just named it. And the kids say Pythagorean theorem. I said, has anybody offered you money to put that to work? Sure. And they say, no, no, no. Well, you've got to figure out hypotenuses in the world of construction all the time. And so these jobs that we are talking about, and this is what I've got to get. We've got to get the message to the parents. These jobs are STEM jobs, science, science. We've got electrons dealing with electricity, oh, yeah. technology, engineering, math, STEM, that's what we have here. And that is why we pay so well. So again, another book, another, let, me, let me see if I can reverse it here. And there's testing instruments. And this is blueprint. Chuck, when I got to go through your facility, you are using state of the art equipment. It's not like, you know, a lot of people think what it's like working in the industry. Oh, it looks like Chuck froze. Um, Did I lose you? A lot of people think that I, you know, oh, you're here. You're just a little laggy. Um, so yeah, it's, but it's a high, fun, new equipment, and it is hands-on. I have to learn hands-on, too. I don't digest otherwise, nor do I enjoy working unless I'm using my hands. So the industry for me is perfect. But it was the learning of translation of math and then seeing the technology. Oh, you're back, Chuck. Um, I'm talking about the technology that is involved. Yes. It is high, high tech. Like, we don't necessarily refer to people who work on cars as mechanics. They're technicians. You're using straight up computers and technology is everywhere. So can you show us some of the, like, you have fun toys. I was blown away. The, I mean, really, it's learning all the high end stuff and electricians. Well, you're the brightest in the yes. room. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh-huh uh-huh you got it right and that's why we make sometimes most of the most of the money now i'm going to walk down this hallway and show you what i call you you, you remember the movie transformers where all those cool cars you know turned into um, robot, alien robots very optimus prime yes <laughs> yes well here you see switch gear and transformers in our world this is the heartbeat of our electrical building and in most buildings. So what does that mean? What does that mean by trans? Well, switch gear, that means they switch electricity. Utility company brings maybe a thousand volts into the bottom of this, of this machine here. And then the switch gear will switch it to various breakers. And you also got transformers. What do transformers do? It's the, this, this gray thing is not gonna turn into a gray van, but it transforms electricity um, and it either ups it or, or voltages up or volt steps it down. And so that's what our transformers do. And then, now, now that's the high voltage. Your transformers run the world is really what it comes down to. <laughs> yes, yes. Now I'm going to get to my, hope, hopefully the light's going to click on here. Come on, come on. <laughs> that's embarrassing if the light doesn't click on. Well, the there we go. It? Oh, there we go. All right, so now we are in the data centers. This is where our folks hook. Now, what we're doing on this phone right instant, talking to you via Instagram, which is owned by Facebook, if our guys did not hook up data centers that have these kinds of dot, uh, racks, then we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing. So the data centers themselves require, as a building, high voltage. But once you get inside and you've got these racks where you're doing terminations of wires and things like that, that's all low voltage. So we train them on high voltage and we train them on low voltage. And in every class that you walk into, you're going to have a book, low voltage, or it's motor amazing. controls, or high Chuck, voltage. you are so, so energized about this. It is amazing. And really, uh, I've toured now Facebook data facilities, and that's all that's inside, and they pay those folks very well. But this isn't always, like, this industry isn't for everybody. So can you talk about, um, you know, what, um, what should somebody who wants to be an apprentice bring to the experience. Okay, well, there's two things. You gotta be smart in the brain because again, the test to get in is algebra one, a little bit of trigonometry, sometimes a little geometry, and 10th grade reading and comprehension. Okay. So you gotta be able to pass a test. That's the brain part. And then the work part is work ethic. We cannot, 20 years ago when I took this position, the first thing contractor said to me, Chuck, we find folks that just don't have the work ethic that we need that we're looking for. So please make sure that folks that you recruit, that you bring into our, our program, um, have a great work ethic. And I say, you know, I say all the time, do you think our contractors would rather hire an A test taker with an average work ethic or a C test taker with a great work ethic? And the answer is nine times out of 10 in the field, um, they want C test takers with a great work ethic. Yeah, okay. I want somebody who can show up on time, multiple days in a row and be focused on work. I don't care how you test. Can you work? Do you like it? That's what I'm looking yeah. for. Now, exactly. um, a lot of folks, you know, let's talk about the difference too between how does an apprenticeship differ from a work study program? I actually saw one of our 
viewers mentioned it earlier um, about being registered nationally, but let's talk about sort of the difference on uh, the difference between apprenticeships and work study programs. Well, work study, I think, is a totally different animal. Like my, my wife, when she went to college, she came from a family that wasn't all that well off. So she was able to apply for work study funds. So as she's majoring in hospital administration, she was actually working in the library, which has got nothing to do with the, what she was majoring in. And then the university, through the federal funds, gave her money to work in the library. So again, work study pretty much is for post-secondary college education for people that might be lower income and want to work a little bit while they're doing that. And it may or may not be in their career field. Sure. And an apprenticeship, though, is four years of focused study that then often these folks, if you get trained in any of these fields, you can travel nationally, globally. These are skills are needed all over. Obviously, you're based in Atlanta. I'm in Colorado, but we're facing the same issue everywhere across the nation is. And so um, these programs are offered all over. Yes, ours is a national program. When you go through our apprenticeship program here in Atlanta, if you go to our apprenticeship sister, their Anika sister chapter in Colorado, you will have the same exact curriculum and you will be put to work. Now, the pay scale might be different. It's not every, every, every market has different pay scale. You go to Chicago or Los Angeles or, or well, I wouldn't say, well, Seattle, um, you can make some very big bucks, more so than Atlanta. But then if you go to a smaller market, then you're going to be making less money. But the, the deal is, again, you're making money the whole time. And speaking of that, let me show you if I can. I'm going to get out our pay scale here in the Atlanta area. And our program, again, happens to be five-year program. And so here's, here's what we we got here. So first year apprentice, you're starting off at about 26,000. Can you see that? Can you see that? Nope, it's very tiny. Um, okay. Mind, so the first though, year you make... Yeah. First year you're making about 26,000 plus benefits. In our world, our contractors pay for about 97% of the benefits on top of the paycheck. So you're starting off about 26,000. You got 20% benefits on top of that. You're really making 30, 30, one thousand dollars when you don't do overtime and then the second year it's twenty nine thousand third year thirty one fourth year thirty six thousand fifth year forty three thousand so while my kids were going to college my two daughters making no money and paying for tuition these young men in our world and women and we all they always say well do, do, can, can women apply yeah, yeah, absolutely we need more more females in our industry they made about 165,000 bucks and then when they graduate in our program the base scale right now is 32 as Scott was mentioned 32 over a little over 32 an hour that's 64,700 bucks a year so plus many, benefits yes so many numbers 30 percent yes huge numbers it is absolutely off the charts and I have to ask you because we are running out of time um, you're in the human resources department so you actually are able to see the hiring process and are aware of that too as you're looking through applicants um, is one program better than another or you know how a resume is put together um Again, it comes down to what a person wants to do. Again, I give, I give, I give folks, I give students, when I talk to them generically, I give them all, again, the five ways to get to a career. And if they have an interest in working with their hands and using their brains, again, fighting that stereotype, fighting the stereotype that you're a big bellied, uh, pants hanging down, dumb as rocks kind of person. No, 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 no. We pay you good money because you are A, going to use your brain. The math that they use here for electricians is just a couple of notches below what engineers use, really. And we pay you that way. But if you don't want to work with your hands, then this is not the right thing for you. If you want to sit behind a computer and not, and, and we got all kinds of comp computers in our world, uh, right there, you see a whole bunch of computers that deal with ones and zeros for PLCs, program logic controls. So, you know, we deal with all that, but your job for the most part in the world of construction is not going to be sitting behind a computer. But if you get to the point where you're a project manager, and that's another thing we, we don't talk about enough, electrician is just the first step. Then you can become a safety director, or you can become a service technician, or you become a project manager. And project manager we hire them, half of them come out of college and half of them come out of the field. Or you can be um, Chuck, all you're the way to, to an owner. Up I met you mind, um... one young man who said he recognized me. I said, how? Well, you told me about this apprenticeship program uh, up in <laughs> Gilmer County, which is way far away from a 
Atlanta, they're out in the, in the not, not in the suburbs, but and he said, I went through the apprenticeship program and now I started my own. That is amazing, Chuck. It is seriously some great stories and really the pathway that students can take is clearly so broad. Let me and see if I can get back. What is great is far Oh, Chuck, hang on. Uh, you're you're definitely lagging, and I'm I'm actually. Can you see me now? Hear me now? You're a little bit choppy, so hang on just a second. Um, I uh, really appreciate all the information can you, you have you been you hear me now? sharing with us. Chuck, we can hear you. Do you mind hanging on just a second? <laughs> cool, awesome. So again, the information has been fantastic that you've shared. Clearly, the pathway is very, very broad. A lot of folks think that you start off in a certain pathway and it stays there. But as you mentioned, that um, not only are you earning while you're learning, there's a lot of opportunity for benefits, but then the pathway is huge. Um, to wrap this up, can you please give me a website on where folks can go to find out more information if they're in the Atlanta area? Oh, nuts. Your audio, is, uh, your audio is now not working. It's like a silly kung fu movie. Um, um, let's see. How about this? Um, nope, I cannot hear you right now. But what I would love to do, Scott, or I'm um, sorry, Chuck, I'm going to hang up on you, but stay on the call because then you can add in the comments the information about the school because I really want our viewers to see that information and be able to go to the website. Um, I can text. I can. I can. Yes. Let's see. He's very laggy. And I do have um, folks with the SEPCU representatives. If one of you wouldn't mind putting up the information to the um, school. Awesome. Atlanta Electric. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Again, Chuck, thank you so much. Chuck is the human resources director and also the most enthusiastic person regarding uh, the program I've ever met. He's with the National Electrical Contractors Association. It was founded in 1901 and it's one of the oldest organizations in the electrical industry. So Chuck, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate the tour and the enthusiasm and all been absolutely a pleasure to uh, get to see that facility. It is, it really is cool. Um, so next week we have another chat and I'm very excited. Um, we are going to be, oh my gosh, oh, Jeremy Whitaker, Scott talked about this. I can't wait. Um, he's now a CW Matthew. So we'll actually be talking about the hiring process. So it was great this week to see the pathway with education and obviously the varieties. And next week we'll be talking about more information on how to get hired. So I hope you folks have um, an awesome afternoon. And let's see, if interested in pipe, yes, there are um, mcagwd.com. Yes, great. Thank you, Bob, for sharing the information. Lex as well. Um, Dory, thank you, everybody, for sharing all the websites. I really hope that some of these comments will stay. Hopefully, we will find out. And I look forward to having um, lunch or coffee or grape juice with you next week. All right. Bye-bye.